Welcome back to Ozarks Tonight. Well, as we all know, the world is going digital, but paper is still around and you may still receive bills, receipts and important documents through the mail from your bank, insurance partner, mortgage lender or even state or federal agencies. But what to do with all of these documents? Well, Darlin Mavens from Arvis Bank is here to answer that very question. Now, Darlin, a lot of stuff comes in the mail still. What do we do with all those important documents? Well, if your first answer to that question is, I file it in safe place, then you should probably rethink your system for sort sorting some of your financial records. The more you have in your financial portfolio, a mortgage, a car payment, investments, the more meticulous you should be about keeping your documents organized. And the better your system is, uh, the easier it will be to access the important documents quickly when you really need them. The key to storing your information is having a safe, fireproof, waterproof filing cabinet at home or an at-home safe with a lock and key um, or a keypad. But you should um, be sure to give your adult children and spouse spare keys or the access code if you do go with one of the, the home safe or the keypad. For sure. And so, you know, I do a good job of keeping all my documents in one location, but the problem is I'm not good at organizing those documents. They're all just kind of thrown in one spot. What are some, some keys to make sure everything is where it needs to be so it's easier to find when you need it? Absolutely. Well, the first step is you kind of want to collect all the pieces of information into one central location. It kind of goes back to that, you know, organized chaos for a little bit until you can get it all filed. Um, this includes your paperwork, your bills, important legal documents, and your contracts. The next thing you should do is create an organization plan. Uh, the most common system is to keep a file folder for each document category. So some categories could be your audit auto, credit cards, mortgage, bank accounts, um, health care, even investments and tax records, your warranties, and especially your wills in those type of documents. Then um, it's recommended that you create a folder uh, to store the contact information or important advisors like your bankers, your attorneys, and your lenders. After you have an organization plan, then you can begin to sort through all those papers and put them in a, appropriate folders. And as a reminder, you should remember to shred all of your important financial documents that have your sensitive personal information on them and not just throw them away in the trash. And you can definitely uh, help yourself out in the future when you're, uh, you're filing your taxes by just having everything neat and organized. It'll save you a lot of time uh, come April when you need to uh, get those documents together again. Uh, so at what point in time should we, uh, you know, get rid of some of the things in the file because it will fill up over time? Uh, and what does not need to be included in that? Well, some things you should keep in your file, uh, your tax records, your tax returns, whether business or personal, um, you should keep those for at least seven years is a good rule, along with any receipts for things you might have itemized, um, file those away within that same tax return folder. You have that medical bills, no matter how old, you should keep those. Your insurance company may ask for proof of payment for big procedures. It's also a good idea to keep those close to have a history of your medical treatments should that need be necessary. Any records of paid mortgages, home renovations, or loans taken out on your home, you should keep those indefinitely. Um, loan information like student loans and auto loans, you should have you should maintain a folder for those. Personal documents like your marriage licenses, diplomas, passports, birth, um, birth certificates, and wills. Um, credit card information, you should keep annual credit card reports and your most current monthly statement in your file. Um, auto documents as well. You can, uh, your title, your maintenance records, you should keep those as well. And at what age would it be a, uh, a smart idea to start talking to your children about where all of this important information is? Because, you know, if God forbid someone becomes uh, incapacitated, uh, you know, a lot of times their children are going to need to go through these documents. So what good age is it to, uh, you know, have sit sit them down and uh, show them, you know, this is where all these important documents are located. Well, every child is different. So that would be important for that um, parent to kind of determine if the child's mature enough to retain that information 
sometimes it just helps to have a centrally located and found place for that. So if you know you have a key or um, you have a combination to a um, home safe, letting your kids know at least where to find that information may be helpful if you don't think they're ready to know exactly what everything is, all of the legal documentation, but at least letting them know where they can get access to it if something should happen to you. But it just depends on the, um, your kid. Usually, you know, upwards 16 and older, they can retain that type of information and 21 and up, they should be able to know exactly what your, um, your desires are should something happen to you. All right, and real quickly before we let you go, uh, Arvest has uh, additional resources available online as well. Uh, what website can people access that? You can go to arvest.com, and we have lots of information from budgeting to how to store and um, retain your necessary legal information. Darlin Maven from Arvest Bank, thanks once again for coming on the show, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. We'll be back with more Ozarks tonight right after this.